Hi everyone, and hope you had a nice Valentine's Day, or as the Peruvians call it, El Dia de Amistad y Amor, which focuses more on love and friendship rather than romance. This episode of Chinese history legendary figure painting has a little of both platonic and romantic love, and is taken from one of the most well-known Chinese folktales called The Legend of the White Snake, or in Chinese, Bai Shi Zhuan. This story had been well in existence long before it was compiled by Ming Dynasty poet and writer Feng Menglong with other popular tales sometime in the early 1600s. It started out as a cautionary tale against caving into carnal desires and lust and going against the natural order of things. However, over time, the legend of the white snake has evolved into a beloved folk tale about enduring love, loyalty, and devotion to your parents and friends, which continues to be played out in dramas and operas even till today. So we begin our story at the famous West Lake in Hangzhou, China. If you've ever been there, it really is, I'm sure you'll agree, a truly magnificent and lovely place that has inspired poets, naturalists, and even landscape architects for generations. In fact, some of the most popular Chinese gardens and therefore Korean and Japanese gardens as well, um, can trace their origins and their inspiration to Westlake in Hangzhou. So one day, a young boy named Xu Xian unknowingly buys some sweets from a god in disguise on the broken bridge near Westlake. The sweets actually contained strong magical powers, thus making him extremely nauseous when he ate them. Um, when this happened, the god laughed at his little joke and turned Xu Xin upside down, causing him to empty the contents of his stomach into the water. Now, a white snake spirit happened to be nearby that day that Xu Xin got sick and vomited into the lake. She was a spirit living in the water, working to cultivate mystical Taoist arts and achieve immortality. Seeing the magical sweet sinking down into the lake, she swims up and eats them herself, thereby gaining years of power and cutting centuries off of her training. Thus, she feels indebted, in a way, to Xu Xin and considers their fates completely intertwined. Years pass, and one day, as the white snake spirit is traveling in the human realm, she notices a bugger looking to sell the gallbladder of a little green snake. She takes pity on her sister spirit and saves the snake by buying it off of the beggar. In gratitude for saving her life, the green snake pledges loyalty to the white snake and promises to serve her as her lady in waiting. Now in human form, the white snake is now known as Bai Su Zhen and her friend, the green snake, is Xiao Qing. One year during the sweeping of the graves festival that usually takes place in spring times, Bai Su Zhen and Xiao Qing become caught in a sudden downpour. Who comes along to rescue them but Xu Xin, who is now a handsome and strapping young man with an umbrella to spare. Xu Xin is so taken by Bai Su Zhen's beauty, and well knowing who he was, Bai Su Zhen therefore invites Xu Xin to collect his umbrella the next day at her home and leaves with Xiao Qing. Then the next day, Xu Xin goes to the appointed address and discovers a large and opulent house. Xiao Qing shows him in and goes to call her mistress. Bai Su Zhen appears and happily spends the better part of the day with Xu Xin. Um, Xu Xin is utterly charmed, but must finally bring himself to leave. And seeing him off, Bai Su Zhen actually asks him to come back tomorrow to retrieve his umbrella. This little excuse to see each other again and again goes on for a little while, but finally, on one particular visit, Bai Su Zhen professes her love to Xu Xin and offers to marry him. Rewind. Yeah, especially by Confucian standards, this was an extremely bold move for a woman not only to make the first pass at courting a young man, but also to invite him to her home unsupervised by an entourage of aunties, matchmakers, or chaperones, um, plus to ask for his hand in marriage. Um, those should have been three red flags to Xu Xin that something wasn't quite right, like maybe this woman wasn't really human and was an immortal snake spirit in disguise, but who knows. That aside, Xu Xin 
at this point was just completely enamored with Bai Suzhen and didn't much care about social norms. He wanted to be with her forever. But his only hesitation was that his family didn't have much money to pay for wedding expenses or for her trousseau. And um, to this, Bai Suzhen actually told him that she had plenty of wealth enough for the both of them and would pay for everything. Um, again, completely backwards <laughs> according to traditional Confucian social norms. Um, but to her and also to Xu Xian, the important thing was that they could be together. So Xu Xian and Bai Suzhen ended up getting married and they moved to Zhengjiang. Given Bai Suzhen's experience in Taoist mystical arts, they end up opening and running a traditional medicine shop there. All is well and good until someone from Bai Suzhen's past comes back to threaten the couple's happiness. A turtle spirit who had seen the white snake eat those magical sweets long, long ago at Westlake makes his reappearance at Zhengjiang. Though he too has trained long and hard to take on a human form um, in the form of a powerful Taoist monk, um, he now goes by the name of Fa Hai. Um, and even though he's attained all this power for himself, he hasn't forgotten about the shortcut that the white snake was able to take and um, look to seek out his revenge against her. One day when Bai Suzhen wasn't around, Fa Hai approaches Xu Xin, um, and posing as a well-meaning, pious man of faith, reminds Xu Xin to give his wife a special wine to drink during the Dragon Boat Festival as a way to repel harmful animals and evil spirits known to lurk the human realm during that time. Grateful for his recommendation, Xu Xin serves Bai Suzhen the wine upon her return, but the wine ends up exposing her true form as a giant white serpent and Xu Xin ends up dying from the shock. The grieving widow, Bai Suzhen, and her faithful lady-in-waiting, Xiao Qing, end up making a pilgrimage to one of the four sacred Buddhist mountains in China called Ermei San. And there they want to seek out an antidote to revive the departed Xu Xin. Though Bai Suzhen flouted the natural order of things by marrying Xu Xin, the gods decided to grant her request because she was truly devoted to her husband and was carrying their child. Rather than deprive a son of his father and mother, they gave Bai Suzhen a magical root, which ultimately was successful in reviving Xu Xin back to life. Xu Xin actually takes this opportunity to tell his wife that he still loves her, despite the fact that she did hide her true identity from him all this time. At this point, Fa Hai is shocked that the gods took Bai Suzhen's side. I mean, if you think about it, it is a little messed up. This um, immortal snake spirit eats a bunch of magical sweets, gains all this mystical power, and then goes and tricks a human into marrying her. It's not hard to see why Fa Hai wants to set things right, so to speak. But he kind of takes it a bit far, in my opinion. Not one to be defeated, Fa Hai kidnaps Xu Xin as bait in order to draw Bai Suzhen into a duel. Now, during this fight, Bai Suzhen actually ends up sending a flood to the city and it ends up killing a ton of innocent civilians and is unsuccessful at defeating Fa Hai. And this is largely in part due to the fact that she is weakened by her pregnancy. Bai Suzhen can no longer fight and rescue her husband. However, the good news is that Xu Xin manages to escape on his own and um, is able to make his way to his wife and together they go back to Hangzhou where their son uh, Xu Mengjiao is born. Continuing in his quest for revenge, Fa Hai actually follows the new family to Hangzhou and in his last attempt to punish Bai Suzhen, manages to corral both her and Xiao Qing, the ever loyal friend, and seal them under the Leifeng Pagoda at West Lake. It's really sad. Um, bai Suzhen isn't able to see her son grow up, but he seems to do pretty well for himself on his own. Um, her son works hard as a student, and years later, after sitting for the civil service examination, returns home with the title of top scholar, which, according to Confucian society, is considered the greatest success of all. 
He goes on to pay his respect for his mother at the Leifeng Pagoda, and the gods are so moved by his loyalty and diligence and filial piety that they decide to free Bai Suzhen and Xiao Qing and allow the family to be reunited at last. Some say that Xiao Qing, uh, the little green snake and lady in waiting, um, ended up honing her own skills during this intervening time, and upon her release, goes on to find and defeat Fa Hai, forcing him to hide in the stomach of a crab, um, which is an explanation of why crab fat uh, is orange, as it resembles the color of a monk's robes. Needless to say, with the passing of this story from generation to generation, the legend of the white snake has taken on multiple meanings and melded elements and values from Taoism, Confucianism, and Buddhism. And now even what might be called a more progressive view of the power of love and the will of a woman to overcome any challenges, whether natural or imagined, that stand in her way. So my painting, The Serpent, actually captured by Su Zhen and Xiao Qing in the middle of their transformation into human form. I actually liked making Xiao Qing the focal point of the painting, even though she's technically a secondary character. And it's often um, shown as a little bit less in control of her animalistic spirit because she hasn't had the same amount of training as Bai Su Zhen had. Um, though a spirit, however, she is governed by um, principles of loyalty and determination, and not just by passionate love like Bai Su Zhen or equally passionate vengeance like Fa Hai, which makes Xiao Qing, at least in my opinion, a far more complex and therefore interesting character. So was the white snake the evil one for seducing a human? Was the monk actually trying to save an innocent man from a deceitful spirit? Who do you think was the hero and who was the villain? Comment below and let me know what you think. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Music